Davao City National High School at Baguio Central School atin pong itaas ang kanang kamay sa pwesto ng panunumpa at sabay-sabay nating bigkasin ang panunumpa sa katapatan sa watawat ng Pilipinas. Panunumpa ng katapatan sa watawat ng Pilipinas. Ako ay Pilipino, buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa bansang kanyang sinasagisag na may dangan, katarungan at kalayaan na pinakikilos ng sambayan ng makadiyos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Sa puntong ito, sa pamumuno ng Rizal Elementary School ng Tacloban City sa Visayas at Misamis Oriental General Comprehensive High School, ipakita naman natin ang ating pagiging makabayan at sabay-sabay natin bigkasin ang panatang makabayan. Panatang makabayan, iniibig ko ang Pilipinas ng aking upang sinila. Tahanan ng aking lahat. Kinubog ko ako at tinutulungan upang maging malakas, masipag at marangat. Dahil mahal ko ang Pilipinas, irindig ko ang payo ng aking mga magulang. Susuntin ko ang tuntunin ng paalala. Tutuparin ko ang tungkulin ng isang mamamayang makabayan, nagilingkod, nag-aaral at pagdarasan ng buong kapag. Iyaalay ko ang aking buhay, pangarap at susikap sa bansang Pilipinas. Leonor Magtolis Briones. Maganda umaga po. Today, we celebrate a great victory. We declare our victory over COVID-19 the destroyer of our lives, the destroyer of our economy, and of our way of life and society. But we will not allow COVID-19 to destroy our children's education and their future. Today, 24,753,906 learners supported by nearly 50 million parents, grandparents, yayas, kuyas, ates, and 866,512 devoted and self-sacrificing teachers, plus our division superintendents, our district supervisors, our heads of schools, regional officials, and central office executives. All of us are participating in the opening of classes this fifth day of October 2020. On behalf of the Department of Education and on my own, I thank all who have stood by our side and supported all our efforts all the way. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, who declared that he is willing to scrape the bottom of the barrel to finance education. Members of the cabinet, led by Secretary of Finance, Carlos Dominguez. Budget Secretary, Wendell Avisado. Members of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases chaired by the Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque and 
co-chaired by Cabinet Secretary Carlo Alexe Nugralis. Mention must also be made of our Chief Implementer, Carlito Valves, and DILG Secretary Eduardo Año, who provided necessary field data and gave valuable advice to us. Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque and Secretary Martin Andanar of the Presidential Communications Operations Office helped us to communicate developments, news, and decisions to the public. Both houses of Congress have raised important policy issues and gave us very wise advice. The House Committee on Basic Education and Culture, chaired by the Honorable Roman T. Romolo, who kept track of developments in basic education practically on a weekly and sometimes daily basis. Two committees in the Senate, the Committee on Education, Arts and Culture, headed by Senator Wynne Salian, and the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, chaired by Senator Pia Cayetano, likewise gave us sound professional advice and also the Senate Committee on Finance, headed by Senator Stani Angara. Senator Christopher Lawrence Go has consistently supported DepEd programs and projects and has raised public statements favoring our budget. Lest we forget, mention must be made of our traditional partners who were always there when the department needed them. Our local government units, you saw on screen how much they have given to us, most of them, <clears throat> and our civil society organizations, especially our partners in the Philippine Forum for Inclusive Quality Basic Education, or EDUC Forum, civic groups, religious institutions, experts in the field of education, and generous individual supporters. With such a huge army of supporters and benefactors, victory is assured for education, COVID-19 natural disasters notwithstanding. We are often asked, are we absolutely, absolutely ready to open schools even as we are battling COVID-19, the destroyer? This is a question which is often asked. But Lapu-Lapu did not hesitate when he and his men fought and killed the foreign enemy with bamboo spears and bolos against cannons, guns, and cutlasses. Andres Bonifacio did not wonder if he and his katipuneros were ready, ready na ba when they tore their cedulas and triggered the cry of Balintawak. Diego Silang did not ask his wife, Gabriela, are we ready na? General Luna, General Luna, as we know him popularly, did not hesitate and ask his fellow revolutionaries if we were ready, if they were ready, when he led the resistance against foreign invaders. Neither did Pantaleon Villegas, known as Leon Kilat, hesitate when he led the revolutionary movement in Negros Oriental and in Cebu. The Gohoy of Bohol did not cringe with fright and doubt. The great Sultan Kodarat of Mindanao did not whisper in fear and trembling, are we ready? When will we be ready? Araw-araw, may bagong krisis, bagong problema, at bagong mga pagkukulang. Paghihintayin ba namin kayong mga mag-aaral? More than 24 million of you. Hindi maaring pababayaan kayo mga mag-aaral. 
ay ginagapang ng mga magulang ninyo ang inyong edukasyon na sa ibang bansa sila naghihirap para mapag-aral kayong mga anak nila. Dugo at pawis ang binubuyas ng manggagawa, makapag-aral lamang kayong mga bata. Ang mga magulang ninyong magsasaka, mangingisda at karaniwang kawani, sila lahat ay nangarap ng magandang pinabukasan para sa inyo, mga mahal naming mag-aaral. Sa toto ng napakalayong bundok sa Mindanao, na hindi maabot-abot ng helicopter. Nakausap ko si Dato Gibang, leader ng Salugpungan Movement for 30 years, tatlongpong taon siya nag-lead ng rebellion ng mga Salugpungan tribes. At siya rin ang nag-umpisa ng mga Salugpungan schools sa Mindanao. Sinabi niya sa akin nung kami ay nag-usap, gusto niya na ang mga kabataang katutubo ay mag-aral sa ilalim at sa pag-aruga ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Sinabi niya din na gusto niyang makapag-aral ang mga kabataang katutubo hanggang kulihyo, hindi lang hanggang high school, upang maturuan silang magiging guro. Paulit-ulit niya itong sinabi, on record itong lahat ng pag-uusap namin. Kaya, hindi natin sila susukuan, hindi tayo susuko sa mga pangangailangan ng ating mga mag-aaral. Gawin natin ang lahat para walang maiiwan. No one left behind, kumbaga. Kahit mahirap gagawin, kailangan gawin, hindi tayo magsihintay. Igagapang ng DepEd at lahat ng nagsusuporta ng DepEd, ang ating pamahalaan, ang civil society, ang parents lahat, kailangan ipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral. Kailangan na igapang natin maski maraming challenges. Ano bang sinabi? ng ating mga bayani tungkol sa kahalagaan ng edukasyon. Sabi ni Jose Rizal, Without education and liberty, which are the soil and sun of the nation, no reform is possible. No measure can give the result desired. Sabi din niya, I am one most anxious for liberties of our country. But I place, this is Rizal, as a prior condition, the education of the people that by means of instruction and industry, our country may have individuality of its own and make itself worthy of these liberties. Sabi pa rin, Jose Rizal, on this battlefield, see a battlefield against COVID-19, man has no better weapon than his intelligence and his learning. No other force but his heart. The curriculum of Deaf Ed is designed not only to sharpen the intelligence of our learners, but also to touch and to mold their hearts. Education teaches us to search for the truth. The good book, book says, Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Apolinario Mabini reminds us, True honor is attained by teaching our minds to recognize the truth and training our hearts to love it. Andres Bonifacio tells us, Reason teaches us that we must be united in will. Tama na yung debate kung magbubukas ba o hindi. Tama na yung mga maraming usap-usapan. We must be united in thought, sabi ni Andres, and that we might have strength to search out the reigning evil in our nation be it COVID-19.
This is the time for the light of truth to surface. This is the time to show that we have our own sentiments, we have honor, we have shame, and we have solidarity. Andres Bonifacio. Two years before the COVID-19 pandemic, I addressed the United Nations thus. I said, what is happening in the country? Whatever challenges we are facing, education must continue. Education cannot wait. Our learners cannot wait. We continue with the process so we can give hope and continuity and contribute to the normalization of activities and growth of our learners in our country. Today, October 5, 2020, we open our schools. Today, we claim victory over the destroyer. COVID-19. Let our classes begin! My warmest greetings to all the students, parents, teachers, and school administrators. As we begin the academic year 2020-2021, the school opening is a year of this year is a momentous occasion because it is pushing through despite global health crisis due to COVID-19. Indeed, nothing can get in the way of the instruction and formation of our learners not even a pandemic. This time also ushers in a new era in our basic education program as we now ventured into distance and online learning. A challenging frontier not only for students and teachers, but for teachers, for guardians, and parents and guardians as well. I commend the Department of Education and its partners for guiding all stakeholders to make this happen. May this school year be marked with strong hopes and optimism that effective learning will make will take place rather, even amidst the odds and challenges. Together let us work to achieve a more informed, enlightened, inspired citizenry, starting with our children. I wish you all the best in your academic journey and mabuhay kayong lahat. Mm -hmm.